massive investment announced and it's a, a big one by Vedanta and Foxconn to do a semiconductor display fab and a assembly and <coughs> testing unit. 20 billion dollars will take some time to get off the ground. There are other proposals also in the pipeline. How significant is this Sanjeev? Especially because the 70s had seen a start in semiconductor manufacturing in India and we were pretty neck to neck with even Taiwan, but we lost out on the race. Well, I can't go back and look at the 1970s. Um, the fact of the matter is, um, there are many good reasons why we, we do need to be in there. Uh, not the least because now semiconductors, chips and those kinds of things are an input into virtually everything. So, just like with uh, critical uh, inputs into pharmaceuticals, this is a critical input into uh, the digital economy and we do need to have some capacity in it. I'm not saying they'll replace the rest of the world. But we do need some capacity here. And so, we are, you know, we do want them here. Uh, the governments, uh, both central and the relevant state governments have uh, put in the effort to, uh, to try and attract this. And um, this is a part of uh, both being at the cutting edge of uh, technology, but also part of our resilience plan and therefore very much in that uh, Atmanirvar uh, scheme of things. By the way, uh, the Americans are doing the same thing, as you may be aware, trying to reshore uh, these things for exactly the same reasons, incidentally. So, I hope uh, some of the uh, non-resident Indian uh, economists are based in the US are having, who dislike our uh, PLI schemes and so on, are um, uh, raising their objections in their country of uh, residence. What about the new global supply order? For the last three decades, uh, the world and uh, even uh, India believed in the uh, relevance of global supply chains, just in time outsourced manufacturing. We are seeing a reversal uh, to that and a realization that you can't just trust uh, a one single country, uh, which by the way, not only is uh, been problematic for India on its borders, but also globally as well. Is there a new reckoning? And Sanjeev, I ask you this as someone who has tracked not just present, but even historical trade ties uh, of India with other nations. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and again, just like India cares about, re has to care about resilience, uh, so do global supply chains and other economies in the world. And one of the things we found out through this uh, last few years, whether it's the war or COVID uh, or the tensions in East, uh, um, uh, East Asia, that um, an interconnected world is also susceptible to, uh, you know, breakdowns. And if your entire uh, sort of business model is based on uh, a single source uh, or a single uh, kind of uh, uh, supply chain, then obviously you are susceptible to that breaking down and breaking down everything as a result, you know, the old story, uh, the battle is lost with, for, uh, for the want of a nail. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in that context, uh, India has a very big uh, value proposition. Uh, we, we are one of the few countries in the world who can do scale in China kind of scale in terms of our domestic market, uh, the amount of uh, labor we can uh, bring to the table, uh, our engineering capacities and so on and increasingly uh, our infrastructure which uh, you know historically may have lagged behind but I think increasingly we are able to create our airports, ports, highways in global quality. So, given that context. And of course, given our own domestic market, which is itself attractive in its own right, um, I think uh, we uh, are making a big pitch to be a part of the global supply chain and part of a global solution. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.